With 48 days until the presidential election, there are many issues fighting for importance. We'll talk with one Catholic couple tonight who are trying to unite and encourage Catholics to be a witness for the true teaching of the church and integrate it in their daily lives and in the voting booth. So please stay with us. Thank you very much. I'm Father Mitch Paquin. Welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you programs and, and about, with guests from all over the world. And our guests tonight have devoted themselves to upholding and promoting the teachings of the Church and Pope Benedict XVI and encouraging the Catholic community to live and share their faith in the public arena at a time when the public arena is trying to keep us out. So please welcome the founders of Catholics Called to Witness, Dr. Manuel and his wife, Adriana Gonzalez. Adriana, Thank you. welcome. Manuel, Thank you. welcome. Welcome here. Now, you all live down in Florida, right? We live in Florida, South uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so come up here. It's just a little bit cooler than it's down nice, South Florida. Very yes. nice up here. Mm -hmm. yeah, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you know, to, what is this organization that you're starting or have started? Yeah, has started. Well, our organization, I mean, we like so many Catholics, like so many people out there, I think have a realization that something is not quite right mm -hmm. and that and not quite right in society and, and even in the church, you know, in the Catholics among us. Mm -hmm. And so with that passion of saying, we want to do something, we want to engage, we want to listen and follow Pope Benedict's call on the laity to engage and to, to be articulate and to do something. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we, we've done, that's what we, we were answering. And we really liked a statement that he made on three non-negotiables. We really liked it because it's not saying that, that other things aren't important, but it's saying these are the things that we cannot compromise, that we right. cannot uh, agree, disagree on. We cannot, right. as Catholics, we cannot disagree on life. We cannot. Uh, we cannot disagree on marriage between a man and a woman. And we cannot disagree uh, on the right of parents to educate their children. And, and so, so based on that, we decided to form uh, a group, really. Now, so folks understand, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, what kind of doctor are you? I'm an internist, internal internist. medicine. So you're a medical doctor, I'm not a, a doctor medical philosophy doctor. or something, but no. you actually get something done. I'm in the trenches. <laughs> I am in the trenches taking care of patients from uh, early on in the morning until, until late at night. Sure, sure. It's a lot, it's a lot of work. and. You know, that's you know, part of the dedication of you and your family to dealing with that mission as well as you know, dealing with uh, raising a family. And you have how many children? We have seven children. Seven children from ages? 21 to six. Six. So you've got a big span. Bunch of ages there. in between. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, you know, that's a good, good long span. And, um, and they're kind of spaced out. You know, over, somewhat. Yeah, and so you know, this is um, you know keeping you very busy, and for a lot of family people, they'd say, you know, I don't have time to deal with an apostolate and serving the church, and I, I you know, I'm serving the church with my family, but how how do you integrate that with being so busy? Mm -hmm. It's not an easy. It's not an easy work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was, it was the Lord. The Lord put it in my heart that this was something that I needed to do. And of course, when we started, the big question was, Lord, I have no time. Right. 
where am I going to find time? Right. And thank God that the Lord gave me uh, a wonderful, fearing God wife that is able to take that load because at times I have no idea how we have done this. Sure. It has been, it's, it's all His glory. Yeah. Now one, with being both very busy, because you also homeschool yes, the ones who are not yet in college. That's right, two are in college and the rest are home and we do homeschool. Right. You know, what are you going to do when they grow up? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, you probably keep have doing some, some time of this. Off. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, but but this issue of being able to witness to the culture. Yes. Precisely at a time when, for the last fifty years, yeah. various groups have been pushing hard, especially atheistic groups, mm -hmm. pushing hard to get religion out mm -hmm. of the public forum yeah. every chance they legally can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to bring it back in. Yeah. What's right. the program? That's right. Well, I think that, um, well, first of all, we need to understand that our nation was founded with uh, the, the, the ability for religion to be in the public arena. I mean, mm -hmm. this was something that was important mm -hmm. and is important to the very fabric of our society. Mm -hmm. So excluding the, the religious voice, excluding Christianity from the public arena has dangerous consequences to society. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was uh, John Adams who said that, that our, that our uh, constitution was made for a religious and moral people. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we need to understand that. So pushing the religious voice out is not a good idea. And, and, and just to add to that, you know, yeah. one of his points was that if the people are not religious and moral, mm -hmm. then what will happen is the state will try to regulate every action we take. Mm -hmm. That was part of that warning when he said that. Sounds and we, familiar. Uh, Sounds exactly, familiar. That's exactly yeah. what's going on. Yeah. They're trying that's to right. overregulate because right. people don't live morally. That's right. And that's Father right. Mitch, if, if you take out Christianity, the problem is what is left on that space? What's going to fill that void? Because then you have secularism mm -hmm. taking over. Taking over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, it's, and it's pretty hollow. Atheism is hollow. It doesn't have a... Pr Once you get rid of religion, you have no purpose left mm -hmm. as an atheist. That's right. That's right. You know, That's right. It's, it's, so right. it's boring. Well, and, and Christianity is all about a relationship with the Lord that, that fills that void that we have for that, for, for that relationship. We were created with that exactly. need. So, yeah. Exactly. So we do need now, it. one, you know, you've both been practicing Catholics all your lives, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, this other realm, of bringing the faith into the public, mm -hmm. you know, that's a next step. You know, it's, that's right. It's, it's somewhat beyond making sure you get to church on Sunday and get the confession and that's all right. this, deal with the sacraments. It's bringing the faith out into the public forum. What do you want to accomplish with that? Well, we want to make an impact in society. We mm -hmm. want to be a voice out there we want to encourage and inspire other Catholics to do the same, to not s be silent, to be part of the vocal majority, not the silent majority. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to raise our voices and, and take a stand. I mean, th that's, that's one of the things we want to accomplish. I think also we want to accomplish a, uh, a, a return to a deeper faith. You know, we have very much on our hearts uh, this, for example, this year of faith that's coming up. Mm -hmm. to really take it seriously, to take that challenge and to say, we want to go very deep in the faith, know the Lord, love Him, and out of that springs, comes out obedience to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Love for the Lord brings us to an obedience to the Lord, to know that, yes, He is our Lord, and He did make the laws and the, and the, the rules that govern us to, to bless us. So, in other words, to see that with being focused on the person of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. having a solid relationship personally with oh, Him, yes. 
from that will then make sense the moral teachings about life, That's right. marriage, That's right. and the other non-negotiables. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think we know, as we know the heart of Christ, and as we enter more into uh, His person and learn more about Him, we know that how abortion grieves Him, how the killing of an innocent human being grieves the heart of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so then it's a, it's a result of our faith that we go into the public arena and not only vote, but also in every area to say, as a doctor, as a lawyer, or a teacher in school, or me teaching my children, that we are going to do it according to the mind and the heart of Christ. Now, one of the things that we see going on t today is there's uh, a lot of uh, division uh, in society and inside the church. You have some Catholics who are focusing on being pro-life. Mm -hmm. Other Catholics are very much focusing on being pro-social justice. Mm -hmm. and how do you see an integration or a balance with these? So that, you know, because it, it, it seems odd to me that people would divide over that when both of those are values we're supposed to live. How do you yeah, see the integration? Right. Well, there are many other issues than that that we see a division with our Catholic brothers and sisters mm -hmm. uh, on, on the issues of life, marriage, and religious freedom. You have immigration. You have the economy. Yeah, and, see, uh, and economy and immigration would fit under that social justice concern. And, and feeding the poor. Feed, mm -hmm, exactly. And feeding the poor. And they're all crucial issues that have divided us for many years now. But some of them are non-negotiable. They are, they are, we have to, we have to be able to say there is no room to negotiate on these three issues. Life from conception to natural death. Marriage between a man and a woman. Our God is the author of marriage. Mm -hmm. So there is no room for redefining marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Religious freedom. We have not picked up that fight. That has come to us. The church is under attack. Okay. I mean, it, it really is the first time the federal government is trying to force Catholics to commit sin by paying for abortion, sterilization, and contraception. I mean, that's what is at stake. They're trying to force us to commit mortal sin by financing this. There have been states in the past that have done various things, mm -hmm. but this is the first time the, the federal, federal government, government has mm -hmm. done it, and that's, that's very new for us. Yes, very dangerous. Mm. Yeah, it marks a break in history. Well, yeah, we're going to see. And I wanted to say about your, your question on the issue of, of social justice. I really believe that the heart of the Christian person is for justice. Mm -hmm. It is for justice for the unborn. It is for justice for the poor. It is for justice for all the, the needy and the, and the people who, who are needy in society. And so that same attitude, that same um, drive in me that wants to save the unborn child is also the same drive that makes me want to go and help the poor. Mm -hmm. and, and I say, we can do both. We can do mm -hmm. both because as, as Christians, what Holy Scripture tells us is to go and help the poor. So as direct as possible, that's what we need to be doing. You know, I, I, I remember uh, my grandmother in Spain. Now, she, God rest her soul, she's, she's in heaven. But I remember her telling me one time, just out of the blue, she asked me, are you taking your children, are, are, are your children giving to the poor? And I said, oh, yes, yes, of course we do. We, you know, every couple of months we collect and, you know, toys, clothing, and, and I take it. And she said, no, 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 
you need to take them to give it to the poor. You see, because there is something about the, the person, the Christian going and ministering as directly as possible yep. to the needy. So that the poor are not part of an ideology, That's right. but they are real, concrete, That's suffering right. persons. That's right. And through that, we can share with them not just the material blessings, but we can also share with them the compassion, a smile, a conversation, about the Lord, you know, that is really what needs to drive us to help the poor and needy. Yep, yeah. exactly, exactly. And this is, yeah. uh, again, the integration of that uh, is key. Um, and, you know, frankly, I don't, when I listen to the politicians, uh, I don't see either political party is saying we want the poor to suffer. I mean, they have different ideas right, about what's going to be the most effective way. And they, right. they should argue those through, hammer out what's going to be the best way and all. And those are, are usually practical applications you use from good sense and experience because right. both really want to help those who are poor, they just have different ways of doing it. Sure, they do. We do and I should also say both ha are weak on the issue of life. They both have areas where we need to correct the Republicans and the Democrats on the life issue. So I'd say there's more of a life issue problem the Democrat platform and sure, the Republican it, yeah. pl platform yeah. of abortion in the case of rape is still wrong. That's right. And we need to get in there to change both platforms. That's right. That's there's, right. Not a, there's not a perfect politician, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Uh, our trust has to be Same in the Same problem Lord. with priests. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and with lay people. <laughs> yes, that's we, right. That's our, right. Our trust has to be in the Lord not on the politicians, yep. but we do have to elect politicians that share our values. And, and, and I think, you know, to, to make sure that we are more committed to Jesus Christ, to the ramifications mm -hmm. of our faith, to the morals that are taught by the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. more committed to that than we are to either party. Yes. The That's parties right. will come and go. Jesus Christ will judge us by how we lived out his values. They won't. Yeah. They won't help they us won't. at the last judgment. They won't. they won't, they won't. Jesus is going to be the one we have to go to. Yeah. Now, you did a video uh, uh, to deal with some of these issues. What, why did you do a video? I, you know, I think that we almost stumbled into doing a video, and that's the honest answer. Mm. We, um, we began with, the organization is very new. We just in, began in February, and right away we said, we thought, well, we know what we want to communicate. We know that we want to say these issues are critical, they're important, they cannot be negotiated. And, but we didn't really know how to go about uh, getting that out. You know, and so we decided to make a video. It was just a uh, sudden inspiration. Let's do this, and um, and and so we did. We we asked our our friends who are videographers. They just happen to be fantastic videographers. Great. Yeah, yeah, and and so they said, fantastic. We'll do the video, and we will and, and we'll produce it. It's called Test of Fire. That's right. All right. Let's take a look at it, and then we'll come back to you. Okay. okay?
<laughs> they did a very good job for you. They are good videographers, and it's a great concept. Um, you know, this is, um, uh, you know, just pulls it together with great imagery. Mm -hmm. Now, these, these issues, uh, do you uh, have people contacting you uh, that agree or disagree with you? What kind of response are you getting? Well, on the positive side, we're getting a lot of great responses uh, from non-Catholics mm -hmm. that are responding, we're not Catholic, but we love your message and we stand with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've also heard that from many, many yes. non-Catholics. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they really are very standing up yes. with us on these issues. It has been so reassuring and uh, I have seen the love from our non-Catholic brothers. Right. Uh, and it's been quite a few thank for, uh, thanking the Catholic Church for standing up for these issues yep. and standing with us on, our, on the attack of religious freedom that we have, mm -hmm. that we are under, uh, undertaken right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you also get some negative comments? Uh, sure, we've gotten, we've gotten quite a few negative comments too. Um, but you know what? If you're going to take a stand today, for uh, any time for Christ, I mean, the Lord told us you're going to take some heat for it, and mm. so hence the <laughs> role of this test by fire. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's, yeah. it's telling us that we're on the right track. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, it's actually a, a very positive thing if people who disagree will engage in the discussion and not just try to silence you. See, that's, you know, some arguments they have about, especially the definition of marriage and, you know, contraception and abortion, they want to just silence us. Right. We have to engage them in yes. the conversation to see if we can persuade them. That's right. That's see. right. We do. And, yeah. and some of those emails, they are, they are we, we can engage with them. And we dialogue back and forth a little bit. See, yeah. and the message is simple. It is a simple message. Our Lord was a simple man with a very simple message. And the message of the video that we were trying to get out there is don't get confused with all these issues. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you look at the issues that are non-negotiables. They are some that we cannot disagree on. Right. If you call yourself Catholics, life is something we can't give an inch on. You know, uh, one of the things that people oftentimes will, will look back in history and wonder, you know, uh, because they'll say, this is just a one issue topic. Right. right. But don't we wish that the Germans in 1932 and 33 had been one issue pro-life of the Jews? That's yes. right. You know? That's right. We wanted them, you know, we look back, why didn't, why did they allow this to happen? Yeah. And it was just one issue yeah. among many. Right. Yeah. But it became, yeah. life became dominant, you know, as an issue. That's right. And that's, that's what right. we're saying too. That's right. That's what we're saying. I, I think, and it's very simple. I think it's very common sense. When you have the legalized killing of any segment of society, and especially the innocent unborn, I mean, you can't have more innocent group of people in society. Right. That has to be utmost importance. Right. How can we be a compassionate society and allow that? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it, it's inevitable. Once you give yourself permission to kill innocents, mm -hmm. you will kill more innocents. Uh, I remember a lawyer in Chicago who pointed out that in the first year after Roe versus Wade was you know, de decided in the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. the murder rate for children five and under increased by a hundred percent in oh one year. Wow. wow. You know, so he, the state said it's okay to kill innocents, 
So people said, well, I didn't get to the abortion. I'll just do it now. Yeah. That became the mentality. Yeah. 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 If, if we look, say? Yeah, I, I was going to say that going down that same argument on single issue, now you get emails that would say, you guys are too narrow-minded. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Too narrow-minded because how can you elect politician with this filter of your three issues or your two issues? That is another one, another email that is very common. Uh -huh. Now, we talked about life, but look at the issue of marriage. If we allow them to, if we allow the government to redefine marriage, where are we going to end up? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Marriage is the foundation. It was our first institution. Well, they, they just passed a law in California about having three parents yeah. uh, based on a very odd case that had violence and all sorts of other things. And, uh, and uh, say, what mm -hmm. are they trying to do? Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, uh, something that is, you know, in California, the governor hasn't signed it yet. He has until the 30th to veto it or not. But or sign it, but you know, you know this idea that you redefine it now. Three parents, yeah. you know, it's yeah. where does it end? Yeah, exa where, where does exactly. You no, know, right. Okay. How malleable? You know, marriage isn't silly putty. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 it, right. it's been defined through the ages. That's you right. know, as between a man and woman. Yes. Yeah. We need to take a break, okay. and we're going to see what kind of questions and comments we get from our studio audience as well as those of you who are watching. So we'll be back in just a couple minutes and we want to get your comments and your questions. So please stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, first, I want to give a little bit of information about the organization uh, Catholics Called to Witness. That's the name of the organization, right? Catholics Called to Witness. And there's a website you can go to, which is www.cc2w.org. CC2W, Catholics Called to Witness. So cc2w.org, and you can get a lot more information about that. Also, uh, around the country, uh, we're going to be starting 40 Days for Life. You know, just like we have 40 Days of Lent, we're going to have 40 Days for Life. Uh, uh, and that will begin September 26th to November 4th. And if you want to find out more about what you can do 40 Days for Life, they also have a website called 40 Days for Life. Make that just one string together, 40daysforlife.com, 40 Days for Life. And they will give you more information about various things you can do to pray and fast and take various actions to help promote uh, the issue of the uh, reverence for life and the non-negotiable uh, issue of life. 
Also, we want to invite you to come here to be part of our audience. If you can join us, please contact our pilgrimage department. They have a phone number, which is 205-271-2966. 205-271-2966. Or go to our website, www.ewtn.com, and they'll give you information about scheduling for masses, programs, tours of the studios, help you with places to stay, where to eat, and all that. All right? You ready for some questions? Sure. Yes. All right. Here Let's start off with a call. We have Jim. Hello, Jim. Hi, Father Pacula. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Illinois. Thanks for your faithful discipleship. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And what's your question? My question is, how, how do we balance an individual's responsibility for social justice with the government's responsibility for social justice? Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me when the government is in charge of social justice, their idea of social justice isn't what my idea of social justice right. is, for example, abortion and other things. And also the government is more prone to uh, bureaucracy, inefficiencies, and corruption, I would say, than uh, the Catholic charities or organizations like that. Right, right. right. Do you have right. any responses to that? Well, that's why the church's social teaching on subsidiarity is so important. We, we need to understand what, that... What do you mean by subsidiarity? What is that? Well, that the lowest entity possible that can take care of the need is the one who should first, firstly take care of that need. So I can raise my children, so I sh I, that's, that's my job. I you're, do not need basic, to delegate that. Yeah, you know, you're the basic unit. You don't that's delegate right. that to the that's state right. or something. That's right. And, and that's why our Founding Fathers put education in the hands of the state governments, not in the hands of the federal government, right. because you want to make it as close to the parent and the child, the family, as possible. And so the same applies with, with welfare. We should deal with that as low as possible, and if possible, through the individual and the church to do as much of that. Uh, charitable works as 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 can the society can it needs. You know, we are each call to take care of the poor. Yep. This is a personal responsibility. It is not the responsibility of the government. It is each one of us are called by our faith, by our Lord, to take care of the poor. Mm -hmm. We cannot delegate that responsibility away. And, you know, the, uh, Jim's point is, is very important, um, that, uh, you know, small private charities, mm -hmm. you, for the most part, not everyone, but for the most part, have been much better at getting the amount of money contributed to the people for whom it was intended. That's right. You know, that the, the government does have, like you said, a lot, there's a lot of bureaucracy and that costs a lot of money and there are wages to pay to you know, run the welfare programs and all this. Um, whereas you give something to the missionaries of charity, you know, the Mother Teresa's community. And they sure don't take much of it. I mean, uh, they, they get it to the people who are in the greatest need. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'd like to see them run this it's government. The, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, m m I want to make another point. This is a great question because it brings to life what we have tried to do. Social justice, both party, one party want to hijack it saying we do a better job. Mm -hmm. Now, we can agree to disagree on this. Right. But in November, we cannot take our eyes of those three non-negotiables. Right. This is not a make or break issue. Right. And, you know, and one of the things, too, I would say to Jim, um, with all the stuff that government does of making sure that there's government housing, uh, food stamps and all that. 
That doesn't mean that uh, children of unwed mothers are being educated well at home. They need tutoring. They need you know, adult, other adults to help them when they're often isolated from family. They need to be part of church. And the government's just not going to do it. It cannot do that. Right. We can still get in there and do things the government can't do. And, and we must. Take, yes. We must do and that. We must. Must. Yes. Let's go to our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Abita Springs, Louisiana. Good to have you here. And what's your question? You. Well, I'd like to know how would you respond or how would you engage someone who doesn't even look at issues, just says, I've always voted for the, with this party and there's nothing, I'm not going to change now. There's nothing you can say. That is a great question. And my approach has always been to find a common ground with that person. Everybody has a common ground, uh, be it economic, be it faith. And once I, once I can get them to that common ground, then I would definitely bring them back, okay. bring them back to what's important, where I want them to focus, mm -hmm. which is in the issue of life. I will ask them, do you have kids? So I will try to engage him in those three issues again. Life, are you married? You need to look at these issues. Right. And, and again, one of the points I was saying earlier, I must, as a Catholic, mm -hmm. I must be more committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. than I am to any political party. Exactly. I judge them by the gospel. I don't judge the gospel by politicians of either kind. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I must stay focused on what Christ taught us. And I know I'm going to be judged by that gospel. Exactly. And my political stance is going to be judged by that gospel too. And it's integrating those two to the best of my ability. That's right. That's my job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have another caller. We have Brett on the line. Hello, Brett. Hello, Father Mitch. Hi, where are you from? I'm from uh, Hurricane, Utah. Wow, we're that far away. What's your question? Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you and the Knights of Columbus for that great movie, For the Greater Glory. Kind of fits in with my question. Okay. It, is there ever a time that the church, especially in this time, that the greatest vote we're ever going to make is this vote, I believe, and I'm in my 60s, but where you would vote for the lesser of two evils, because I can look at what's happening in our country, and I can say pro-choice, pro-life is easy for me. But then when they speak of social justice and stuff, I think of what Christ taught us, the greatest commandment, love one another. So I guess that's my basic question is just how does the church approach it when you've only got two choices and one is going to be the lesser of two evils? Right, right. Do you want to respond to that? Well, and the church does teach that then you must choose the lesser of the two evils. So mm -hmm. the one that's going to do the less, the least amount of damage that they use, mm -hmm. believe so. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's clear. Right. And, and again, is looking at which I issues are the greater, the greater evil. Right. That, right. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. So life, marriage, when you look at those two issues, and then move on. Right. right. Yeah, if you take somebody's life, you don't let them even begin to relate to the other issues. True. That's right. You know, if they're if dead. there's no life, there's nothing else. Exactly. Exactly. Their other rights are taken away. That's mm -hmm. why the Declaration puts life as the first of the inalienable mm -hmm. rights that yes. God, our Creator, gave us. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
if you take that away, there's nothing else left. That's right. Yeah. Well, and we're created in his image, so right. human life is sacred. A society that does not embrace the sacredness of human life, that's very dangerous, down and a slippery slope. I know. It. It's, um, uh, you know, something uh, that the, one of the arguments that had been used, well, I, you don't want a kid who's unwanted to be born. Wouldn't that be miserable? Yeah, it would be miserable, but not as miserable as having your arms and legs cut off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's... Well, and what if there's an unwanted two-year-old? Then what are we saying? Are we saying then that that child we should do away with? Uh, so where does that argument, that is nonsensical? I've known a lot of parents of 14-year-olds who make them ah, become well, unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and we play with words. We have teenagers. We, we play with words to minimize the value of life. In my practice, I have come across where a patient will ask me, doctor, I want to terminate my pregnancy. And when I put it in, you mean you want to kill your baby? The expression on her face totally changed. Mm -hmm. Because I, they, don't, they don't know that human being. Right. Mm -hmm. There's not a relationship there. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's why those 3D ultrasounds are, are powerful. They you are. fall in love with the baby. That's you right. see, they it's a real God baby. Sent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have another question from our studio audience. Sir, where are you from? I'm from Jefferson, Georgia. My Good to have Pedro you Castillo. here. Welcome. And what's your question? Yeah, my question is, um, uh, several weeks ago, I have been in discussions with, uh, with how the Catholic teaching about same-sex marriage and, and the definition of marriage. And I have been attacked like uh, uh, I'm yeah, I'm very intolerant, and also I'm, I want to impose my religion to others, and I just want to know how, how to respond to that. that was very good question. Mm -hmm. And you, you yeah. guys, that's one of your three non-negotiables. Absolutely. Can't redefine marriage. Absolutely. How do you respond to an accusation that you are being intolerant? Yeah, you know, tolerance, tolerance presupposes different opinions. And so if we're going to be, um, if, you know, tolerance goes both ways. So if uh, I'm going to be tolerant, then they need to be tolerant of my different opinion as well. Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about the issue of redefining an institution that is an institution uh, put forth by God himself. I mean, the, the catechism says God himself is the author of marriage. We can't mess with something that God himself is the author of without dire consequences. And that, is, that to me, to a believer, to a Catholic, that is number one argument. If God created it, we need to be very wary of changing it. That's number one. But number two, when a relationship exists, like marriage, in society, and, and, and governments have recognized and given privileges to that relationship because of the good that it brings to society, because it does bring new life. I mean, it literally brings the future of society. There's a vested interest in the government to uh, support and to recognize those relationships between a man and a woman, a marriage between a man and a woman. We're talking about redefining that. There's no, there's no, no call for that. There's no call right. for redefining, calling another relationship marriage that is not. One of the arguments I've also heard that relates to his question is um, people will say, uh, some of the politicians say, you shouldn't be discriminated on the basis of whom you love. And that's right. You know, we don't want to discriminate on the basis of whom you love. That, we're not against you loving anybody. Right. The issue is redefining marriage. That's right. It, you know, you can love whomever you want and seek what is their good, their dignity, and what's inherent to them. But that doesn't mean that you redefine marriage. That's right. There's so a lot. I mean, right. there's love yes. of friendship. Yeah. There's love of 
mother and child. There are lots of different aspects of love, but you don't redefine marriage. It's only in marriage that, you know, between a man and a woman that a child can be conceived. No matter how divorced, they make the process from a natural process. It still took a man and a woman, no matter what petri dish you use, there still is a man and a woman behind that. That's right. Uh, and, and there's just no other way to make babies, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, love whom you want mm -hmm. and truly love them, seeking their eternal best. That's what we want out of love. But you don't say that marriage is something that, that the not. human race has not re redefined in its history. You know, this, that's key. That's right. That's right. Non-negotiable. That's yeah. right. That's right. I have another question from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Sydney, Australia, Father Mitch. Oh, good to see you again. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. And your question? I'm just interested in um, what activities that your ministry does to promote um, the non-negotiables and the work that you're doing and what's the most effective um, measures that people can take in their day-to-day -day life to be involved in this such an important cause. Talk about. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad for her question. Can, can yeah. I just jump right in? Sure. Um, I'm so glad for this question because we have a, a lot of things going on, you know, in the, in the back burners and in the front burners. But one very important project that we are uh, we are trying to get out there to everybody is um, Catholics for Freedom of Religion. And, you know, we've gotten so many emails in response to the testifier, and a lot of them have said, what can we do? How can we get involved? Can we start chapters or local chapters? And so this has been an answer to that. We met a woman, Barbara Samuels, in New York, who had already started this program, Catholics for Freedom of Religion. And it's really a simple grassroots project of people starting groups in their own parishes that are going to educate and advocate for religious liberty. We need to stand up now and to make known to all our, our circle of influence the importance of religious liberty in our society and what a better way to do it than in our own parishes. So it's very grassroots, it's very uh, boots on the ground uh, type of approach and what we're doing is we hold webinars. We're having one coming up this Saturday. That, that, and a webinar is what? The webinar is, it's kind of two-part. The first part, we're having... No, what is a webinar? Oh, what is a webinar? Yeah. I'm sorry. Not everybody knows what those are. <laughs> yeah, well, a webinar is a very cool way to communicate with people who are very far away. So you need a computer and you need a phone. Or, yeah, you, actually, you don't even need a phone. Um, but the through internet, your computer, and you need the Internet, right. And so through and the Internet... And a computer that has a camera. Well, not, uh, not no, necessarily. No, no, we no, we no, because um, because they're only watching their computer screen. Okay. So we're not seeing them. Okay. And and so basically, you you register for the webinar. You get a login information, and you just click on it. And and if you if you want to, you can listen by phone, or you can listen through the speakers of your computer, and you get the information that is being discussed. And so we show things on the screen, as well as we have speakers. So our webinar on. Saturday is going to feature Dr. Shauna Sagru from Ave Maria University and she's going to speak to us. She's a political science professor and she's going to speak to us about separation of church and state, about religious liberty, about the health and human services mandate. And, and then the second part of the webinar, it's a one hour webinar, the second part of the webinar is going to have Barbara Samuels explain, walk through the steps of starting a uh, Catholics for Freedom of Religion group in your own parish. And so we have all those materials on, on our website and, and, and that's, what we're, that's what we're doing. So people can, can join this webinar. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Let's get another call. You have Marie on the line. Hello, Marie. Hi, Bob Takwa. Thank you so much for taking my call. And sure. Where are you from? Your wonderful guest. I'm, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania. Great. And what's your question? Just a statement I have tonight, uh, Father Pacwa. I've always thought that, unfortunately, that tax-exempt clause that, that's dangled over the church's head keeps the pulpits quiet. We're so afraid of losing that tax-exempt that what should be said is sometimes muzzled. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, 
And one of the things that all of us clergy, and we have the same problem here at EWTN, you know, because we're tax exempt. We, what the law does not allow us to do, and by the way, the law only goes back to um, uh, the, the president, Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. Lyndon Johnson, when he was in the Senate, made it as a part of the law that you cannot promote or denigrate specific candidates, all right? You can criticize moral positions in the government. Mm -hmm. That is legal for, uh, and, and so, and that's what we do. Right. We are against certain moral principles. And, you know, we have to, we are free to speak about those principles, but I can't tell you to vote for this guy and vote against this guy. You have to vote on the principles. That, that's what we can say. That's and right. we priests need to be able to, you know, not be so afraid to do that. They, people try to threaten us, you know, to be quiet, but they're trying to threaten us, you know, a lot of ways, to, you know, to find us out of existence. So, um, you know, we, we just have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have another question. Uh, you're, uh, where are you from? I am from Orlando, Florida. And your question? Yes, my question is, what would you say to a young girl from this generation who thinks there's nothing wrong with an abortion and is currently considering killing their baby? What would you say to them to make them not kill their baby? Well, you have about a minute. Okay, the, okay. Uh, first, I would go to some serious prayer to make my words as, uh, as, as effective as possible to this young lady. And then I would talk to her about the baby in her womb and about the future, about what one year later and one and a half year later are gonna look like when that baby, she can run with the baby and talk to her and, and, and cuddle up with her and to really make her grasp that reality and the loss of it. Yeah, yeah. And the physician part of me will tell her, you should watch the video before you do it. Watch yep. the sonogram? Watch the actual procedure. What, oh. what goes how, on. Oh. What goes yep. on to see how barbaric it is. Yep, mm. yep. Mm. I mean, uh, I've always, I've never been in favor of abortion, but I never felt such a fire in my belly as, as until I watched uh, the silent scream. Yes. And you can see the little baby in the womb. They did an ultrasound of the abortion. Yeah. And the baby is punching at the knife and kicking at it before they cut him in pieces. Yeah. Yes. You know, and he's fighting for his life. So that's a good thing. Yes. One bad thing is we've run out of time. Oh. Yeah. I want to thank you very much for the work you're doing and for being here to join us, to share that, and hopefully many will join what you're up to. You. And again, it's www.cc2w.org. All right, Catholics call to witness. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and lead you in all of his ways. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, we can bring folks uh, here to be on this program. Adriana and Manuel can be part of us because you make this network possible. You bring this to you. And so we ask you to please keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill, because we have a lot of our own bills to pay too, and your help is absolutely essential. God bless and thank you.